Wow, here we are again, folks. I'm going to do a preface on the book of Revelation. It'll probably be five to seven minutes long. And if you want to see it, it's just a preface so you can read it and see what is in the book of Revelation. The first thing it is, it's a divine revelation written by John on the Isle of Patmos. He was up, sent over there to die. And while he's there, God gave him some help and used him. I'm sure an angel stood by him as he worked and wrote this book of Revelation. Uh, and it's called an epistle and it, of Revelation. And it was given, it was sent to the Romans uh, is where it was sent. Uh, it's likened to a great, um, I've got one thing that tells me uh, it would be the cathedral of Christianity. If the whole Bible was the cathedral of Christianity, the book of Revelation would be the highest pinnacle on that cathedral, if you please. And uh, it's through chapter 8 is the highest of the towering spears of the divine revelation. So, and we're looking, I'm sitting right now in chapter 8 as I'm going through Revelations again. And uh, um, the, the grandeur, wow, this is a, the theme of this chapter is like the, like the, uh, a great choir, like for instance the New York Symphony Choir or some great, great piece like Handel's Messiah. Here's one right here in the middle of Revelation. And, uh, and it shows uh, the, the largeness of its references of God. It's, uh, it, the sweep of Revelations in its entity. The good news of the message about God answers to sin, tyranny, it's lovely, it's soul-sustaining, uh, uh, it is something you want to study at home, not just go to church and listen to, and you want to sit down and study it for yourself, and its closing thing is the triumphant trumpet of God, uh, no, on the uh, security of the believer. It is our book of security as a believer. It is my book of security for how the end time is going to happen and end up. It, what it's called, the Revelation, the last book. It's the Revelation, the last book. God the Father is seen as judge. Now we know that God the Father is going to be the judge in the end in verses 30 and 33, as a benefactor of verses 32, it's uh, the ruler of history is God. He is the ruler of history. He started it, and he's going to end it. And 28 to 30, as the Lord who searched the hearts, in verse 27 now in chapter 8, calls men justified the glorious believers in 30 above all he shows as the God of love in 39 who spread not his own son but delivered him up for us all verse 32 wow listen to this he that spared not his son but delivered him up for us all who shall he not with him also freely give all things. This son Jesus that went to the cross gives us all things at the end of Revelations here. Everything that is for the believer is through the son. Now, God the son. Now this is where we have our big uh, di difference in us, the Christian believers, and and the uh, Jehovah's Witness. I talked with one this week. 
And she said, well, you believe that Jesus was God, was God in the flesh. And I said, yes, ma'am, I do. He is God the Son. He is the Son of God, yet He is God the Son. He can't separate Himself from God the Spirit and God the Father because He's not dead. And they're all one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all one. They can reveal themselves separately. I do believe. This is my belief. When we get to heaven, I'll be Peter, the body. I'll be Peter, the soul, and I'll be Peter, the spirit. And God will use me in many different ways as that. You know that Paul the Apostle, when his body was killed, his soul and spirit went to heaven. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the third part, the other two parts. And they join, or will join, his body at the great uh, revelation when God does the judging of the Christians. Now, uh, chapter uh, 32, where was I? All right, God's spirit closer to life and peace. He talked about life and peace uh, as our quickener. He is our, he is our quickener that quickens us. That means... We become alive the second we die. <laughs> you got to die to be quickened. So when you lay on the deathbed, draw your last breath, you will be quickened into the uh, realm of God in some way, shape, or form. And verse 11, he is the indweller. Now, he also quickens us while we're right here on the earth. When I'm up here teaching or preaching, I'm being quickened by the Holy Spirit of God. He's here with me right now. He is the indweller. He indwells me right now. He's here. He leads me. How does he lead me? Through the Word. His witness of our spirit. And the intercedes. He intercedes to God that we belong to him. That we have asked Jesus to forgive us our sins and we belong to him. And so he intercedes for us. And then he is the spirit of our sonship. That we are children of God. And the first fruits of our redemption. Verse 23. The first fruits of our redemption. Let me take a look at that verse 23. Right here. And not only they, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. You and I have absolutely, positively, 100%. I don't care if you're the most knowledgeable preacher in the whole United States or in the whole world or anywhere else. The first fruits here is talking, I believe, when we get to heaven, we're going to be the first fruits in the new heaven and the new earth. The new earth for a thousand years. God is going to have a use for us. We're in a training program. I am training right now to be what I'm going to be in that new Jerusalem. I even go further to believe that God said he's building us a mansion. And he's building it with our works. And according to our works is the size our mansion is going to be. Have you, are you doing any Christian works? Are you doing any Christian works? When you say good morning to somebody, say God has made a beautiful day, hasn't he? Uh, or when you, uh, when you uh, uh, see somebody, I take these out. And I pass them one of these. I make it a habit. I don't care if there's 1,400 people standing around me. And to the individual I'm talking to, I'm going to give him one of these. This is a track that says, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? I wrote the track in 1973. Been passing it out ever since. Thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And still I, and still will, and I'm still going to. And before I die, that's my commission in life. And so, the Lord with whom we are to be glorified, the Savior of our souls. Imagine that. We're going to be glorified with the same Savior that saves us. We're going to be part of his train. Behind him, 
is a train of millions of people. Peoples throughout from day one, from Adam all the way to the last child that will be born on this earth. Now we know that during a thousand year reign, the, the earth is going to repopulate. Where men are going to live and women are going to live again lots of years. And during those years, they will bear lots of children. We know that I was reading the other day in the Old Testament where a man was 700, 700 years old and still having children. And he had children right up until he died. The spirit of sonship is the first fruits of our redemption. Now, after the cross, sonship was the promise that we will be and are already the sons of God, too. We are grafted in through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you please, we are not as the Old Testament people were, followers of God. We are followers of Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. So God is sharing his Godship with his son and giving him the ability to be God in his place for where he is, for the time he was here and for the people who are here and the way he's written in the Bible. And that's the way it is. The chapter speaks of men as well as men devoted of the spirit cannot please God. Ah, uh, Men divide, divided are uh, not having the spirit of God cannot please God. The Christian knows infer in infinitely. Uh, but many live by the Spirit as God's heir. Moreover, his body as well as his spirit is involved in God's plan of redemption. Verse 23. The best of all, he is to be, be conformed to the image of God's Son. Listen to this. Instead of being conformed to the image of God, we're going to be, excuse me, I dropped my light. We're going to be conformed to the image of God's Son. Verse 23. Let's read it. And also, and not only, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of to which the redemption of our body. So there's going to be a redemption of our body. I've heard many, many preachers. I've listened to thousands and thousands and thousands of preachers. Since 1972, I have a repertoire of two or 3,000 tapes of preachers that I got back through the 60s and 70s and uh, all the way, some even back before the 60s. And uh, when the tape recorder was first made, and uh, uh, I listened to thousands of preachers, and they all agree on the same thing. There's a good possibility until the judgment seat that we will not be known as we're known for the new kingdom, for the new earth. At the judgment seat, we will be rewarded according to our works. I don't believe that our works are going to come up recorded at the minute that we die. Because after we die, the works that we do are going to go on. These works I'm doing on this computer right here will go on. They will go on until the end of, of this generation's time, or the time ends here before the New Jerusalem comes out. And so they're going to go on. So these will be works that will be uh, applied to my account uh, later on, even after I'm dead. And moreover, his body as well as his spirit is involved in God's plan of redemption. And the best of all, he is to be comforted, uh, to uh, conform, excuse me, to the image of God's Son. Now, I just read that a couple minutes ago, and I want to say something. Are we going to be in the image of God's Son? says we are. That the, One of those images is in the spirit, the spirit of him. The other image is he was physically 33 years old. 
myself and many, many other preachers that I listen to and hear believe everybody says, they ask you, what are we going to look like in heaven? Am I going to look like I'm 78 in heaven, which I am now? And a lot of preachers, if I say that to them, they say, huh. Now, I actually believe you're going to look more like Christ. You're probably going to look like you're 33 years old. <laughs> so, so, we don't know that for a fact. All we know is what, as we study, we can surmise from how it's written. The opening verse of the chapter summarizes chapter 5 and 8. The closing verses are a rock upon which assurance may stand forever. Yet the assurance is accomplished by moral means. For God's great objection, which uh, must be realized, is for his children to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, we're being conformed daily to the image of his son in learning what his son said. The Bible reading of the words that Jesus himself said uh, causes us to draw closer to his image. I have Matthew and Acts on VCR tape from way back, way, way back, and I play them all the time. His disciples were to mimic him when he went to the cross. After the cross, all but John, when John wrote the book of John, all but John were killed already. When John wrote the book of John, he was the last disciple left on earth. When he wrote the book of Revelation, he was it. He was the last one here. And all the other eleven had been killed for the name of the Lord. And don't you know they tried to kill John, but God wouldn't let him die. They dipped him in a pot of boiling oil before they put him on the Isle of Patmos. That would be enough to kill any human being. But John weathered the storm. I see John sitting at a table, penning revelations with angels on both sides of him, the Spirit of God over him. And you know this vision they show us of the light shining on Mary. Yes, she was the mother of God, but she wasn't anything special other than that that God had chose her to be the mother of God. And she is not in, in deity. We don't worship Mary. We don't pray to Mary. She is not to be prayed to. She was not. She was chosen to do a job, and that was to bring Jesus uh, on the scene. And by the way, Joseph had to agree 100% uh, with her for all that happened in order for it to happen the way it happened. And so he was a great part of it also. Now, this little excerpt I figured was going to take us six to eight minutes maybe. has took us 18 minutes. But I'm going to close it for now. And I'm going to bring a few more of these on uh, in the very near future. And so we'll see you next time, right? Bye-bye.